listen.
Put some praise tonight. Let's magnify him for his goodness. We glorify the Lord for just being here, for being in the land of the living. I want to thank God for another Wednesday night Bible class. I want to thank God for the saints of God that have come out to be partakers of this service. I want to thank God for those of you that are watching and listening, those that are watching by YouTube and Facebook, listening by podcast. I want you to know that we appreciate you. We thank God for you and those that are watching by YouTube, if you will, hit that subscription button for us. Amen. If you like what you hear tonight, there's nothing wrong with giving us a thumbs up or showing us a little love and throwing some hearts on there, whatever. But we appreciate God because it's just another day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you all, but victory is mine. Victory is mine. I, I, I'm, I'm declaring that victory is mine. No matter what comes up, what happens, what shows up, I'm a victorious person. I'm victorious because the God that I serve is victorious. And tonight the Lord gave me something, and I'm going to get into the meat of the word and try to encourage us in the midst of all this going on that we see in our society. The Lord has everything under control. I've said it once, and I know you all heard me say it again and again. It's, it's going to only get worse. It's going to only get worse. Amen. Uh, this is just the beginning of sorrow. We haven't seen anything yet. There's one thing about God. God is, he's balanced. For as much God, as God has his mercy side, then there's the wrath of God. And God is tired of man. Man has tried to rob him of his glory. Man has tried to basically kick him to the curb like he doesn't exist. You know, they want, everybody want to say, you see people that come out of catastrophic uh, incidents, things that could have really taken their lives, uh, medical problems. And you hear that old saying over and over. My, uh, I was listening to the news that uh, they were interviewing a couple of uh, football players. Pre Prescott was one of them and another player that had, had suicide in their families. And they was asking him how did he cope with it. And he used the term that he, he thanked God for his support group. His, the people that are around him, his families, his friend, and all that. But, you know, you don't hear anybody saying anything about, I thank God. I don't know about you all, but if, if I hadn't been saved, I may not be sane tonight. If I, hadn't, if, I, if I hadn't gotten saved when I did, I can't say where I would be tonight. I look at classmates and different things, the things that have happened to people that I know. But I, and, I, and I look at incidents that have happened in my life and knowing this that the things that happened I could have been dead numerous of times but God spared my life and you think I'm gonna give the devil credit and let him feel like you know okay uh, medical science just when I had asthma the Lord healed my body they told my mother was nothing they could do for me when I look back over the different things when we got this church how the Lord blessed when I got my house, I told a lady that uh, owned the house. Uh, I passed by the house, and the Lord told me to turn around and go back, and I did. And a lady was in her backyard, and I called the, the number on the sign, and she was saying, did you just pass by in a blue car? And I said, yes. She said, would you like to see the house? I said, yes. We went and looked at the house, and, and she uh, was a realtor, so she didn't sell her own house. She had a friend to handle the deal for. But I'm, I'll never forget how good God was when we got ready to buy the house. This was in 2002. I told the Lord, I said, I'll never buy a house until I have a place for your people to worship. We got this church in August of 2002. We got our house in December of 2002. And to show you how good God is, the way God, and y'all have heard the testimony how the Lord moved with Pastor Breon and how we got to church and we got ready to buy the house. I, was, uh, I told the lady, I said, we were doing well. Everything was well. And then her friend came back and said, you know, Mr. Rogers said there is about uh, $4,500, $5, $5,000 different in where we are and where they want to be. And I said, ma'am, I told you, I don't have any money. We just bought a church. And that was it. She said, well, let me go back and talk to the owner. And she came back and told me that she said that the owner and her husband wanted me to have this house so bad, she said, they're going to eat that $5,000. I said, so I got the house with zero down. I said, look at God. You tell me God isn't a miracle working God. Somebody said, well, Apostle, why are you saying that tonight? Because I'm sitting the stage for my message. 
My message tonight is, and something that we find ourselves doing, my message tonight is remembering past victories. Somebody should have said amen. Remembering past victories. Remembering things that God, you know it was God. It had to be God. It was no way it could happen without God. It's all right. Remembering, and see, it's good to remember things that happen. Just like the devil, you know what the devil wants you to do? He wants you to remember past defeats. <laughs> He's just the opposite. He wants you to remember this when this didn't happen, when you lost a car, when you lost this and you lost that. But, you know, remember how, how you had this and then all of a sudden you thought you was on top of the world and he snatched the rug out from under. Remember, yeah, you thought you was there and you went to jail. You ended up on drugs. You ended up pregnant. You had a child. And all. But tonight I want to talk about remembering past victories, the times when God brought you out. And you know beyond of a shadow of a doubt it was nothing but a God that did that for you. What did Jesus tell his disciples? When his disciples, they got so accustomed to Jesus working miracles. He said, y'all remember the loaves? Y'all don't remember the loaves? What, what, what did y'all do? Y'all got a little careless because I'm making bread. Y'all thought I'm going to make bread. No, 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 no. We ain't wasting nothing. And see, this is one thing you got to remember, too. When God bless you, you can't get careless with your blessing. You can't get to the point where you handle your blessing foolishly. Well, amen. You can't ask God to bless you and God bless you and then you can't, well, uh, I, I forgot to pay my tithes. Well, see, God going to forgot you on the next go around. See, this is the thing we have to remember. Remembering past, if you're not careful, we all got enough stuff that we can look at the negatives. But what we have to do in Christ is to be able to look at the victorious times. The time when we were like we were down for the, he was in the counter side. The devil was getting ready to count us out. And up, we brought our shoulder just before we, he got us. Remembering past victories when, when you got information from the doctor. Information wasn't looking good. You know and I know. You should have been dead. I should have been dead years ago. We could have had amputations years ago because this, that, and the other. And you know, maybe I just, I'm going to just encourage myself tonight. Remembering past, I'm talking about when you know you should have been dead. I'm talking about when I was 10 years old, my mother told me to stay home, and I went with a friend on, on his bicycle, went around the block, and got hit by a car. The neighbor down around the corner was the one that hit me, and I'm laying there on the ground, leg swole up, foot laying to the side, leg broke, laying almost on a manhole, and I'm, I'm 10 years old, laying on the ground, and the bump of the car is just a few feet from me. Even though I got hit on the bicycle, I did, it didn't knock me out of the, the, out of the street. I'm still laying there in the street, but the, the man that was driving the car was able to stop the car. Because just like he hit me, he could have just run over me. Well, amen. I could have been, I could have been run over. Bam, dead, drug down the street under the car. But look at God. Hey, God. That's all right. I get happy all by myself. Ain't none of y'all. Maybe some of y'all don't have nothing to remember, but I, I got plenty. Amen. I got, pl I got plenty, and I'm thankful, and I'm thankful, and I'm thankful, and I'm going to do this right quick. Because I don't need nobody saying, Pastor, cut your phone off. But you know God is good, and his mercy endureth forever. And, I, and tonight when the Lord gave me this, I just got to thinking about all the, the stuff I've been through. Even like with Sister Rogers and all of that. When, when I went to New York to get married, I only had so much money. And I got there, my brother's car was running fine. I borrowed swap cars with him. He had mine and I had his. Got there, and when I got there, the water pump went out. But God waited till we got to New York when the water pump went out. Had to have the car fixed. Now, I wasn't expecting to replace a water pump. So when you go to a garage, you know it's going to cost you. And I said, okay, and then I'm, I'm saying I'm going to get a U-Haul to bring things back. So I'm going to get a, a, a U-Haul hitch and put it on the car. Then they tell me, say, the U-Haul hitch won't fit on the car. So we're going to have to put a hitch on the car. Now I got to have a, a, a hitch mounted to the car. 
The devil said, yeah, your money's getting thin now. I had to buy a gift for the ushers and all that. And, and, and I'm, I'm sort of pressed in it. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, he said, don't, he said the way is made. That's all he kept saying. The way is already made. And I'm saying, okay, okay, God. I went ahead and I'm keeping a big smile and I'm looking good, feeling good. And ah, the way is made, you know. And the wedding is getting closer and closer. And I'm knowing I got to drive all the way back to Texas. The way is made. And after we got married and we, uh, after the wedding, we went to my mother-in-law's house and we were there opening gifts. And when we started opening gifts and cards and envelopes and this and that and the other, when we started counting money, uh, we had well over $1,000 in just cash money. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I told you the way was already made. Boy, I came back to Texas leaning. <laughs> because I was happy. I, I, was, I was happy. But see, this is what I'm saying. Remember past victories. Remember when the devil meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Remember when he, when he tried to suck the life out of it. He tried to take all your substance from it. When he, tried to, uh, when he had tried to tarnish your reputation. And instead of your reputation going bad, it flipped the other way and your reputation got even better. I ain't getting no help right now. Sometimes the enemy tried to mess with your finance. I wish somebody would just talk back. I'm talking about when the devil tried to tell you, okay, this is that and that. Now you can't do like you used to do. You can't do this and you can't do it. Let me tell you something. God can put you in a position as a single person and your cash flow can be better. Uh, your cash flow can be so it'll scare you. You'll ask yourself, how did my credit scores get way up there? And I, I didn't do this, and I didn't do that, and I didn't do this. And you know what God doing? God's just doing it for you. God's slapping stuff together, putting stuff. You know what them angels is doing? They're going in there changing stuff and fixing stuff, and you don't know nothing. Then when you check it, you say, well, well how did, where did that come from? Remembering past victories. I'm talking about when you got ready to go somewhere, and you needed transportation, and this wasn't together. And before you knew it, God moved in your favor. Uh huh. There's been time you know it. You know it, and I know it. You told yourself, "I'm gonna go." Well, I know so and so. They, I know they, they got, they pretty strong. They got some paper, so I'm just gonna go and ask them. And then the Lord speak to you and tell you, "Now, don't ask nobody." Yeah. And you have to swallow twice, maybe three times. He said, "Don't ask nobody. Be still and know I'm God." Ah, ah. He said, "Just, just watch, watch me." Watch me move, and then God start moving and touching people up. Before you know, phones start ringing, or people come by. Before you know it, somebody say, up, oh, here comes something in the mail. You just go out to the mailbox, just sort of haphazard, you know, sort of head down, dragging your feet. And before you know it, the Lord just, you open it up. What is what? Say, bills, 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 bills. Oh, check, 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 check. Thank you, Jesus. This is what I'm talking about. Remembering past victories. I'll never forget one time, as I told y'all the testimony about Sister Rods and I, how we, uh, I left to go to work, and I was asking her about what she was going to fix for dinner, and she said she didn't have anything, and I told her, and I asked her the question, I said, isn't there a chicken in the freezer? And she said, no. I said, look, and she went, and when she, oh, you, you see, some of y'all, y'all's freezer is so full, you don't have that, but see, my freezer was so empty that when you open the door, all that white smoke just come rolling out of there. And she had to wait for some of the smoke to come out before she could look. When she said she had looked, when I said, go look again. And when she went to look the second time, can anybody hear what I'm saying? When she went to look the second time, back in the corner of the freezer was a chicken. Somebody said, well, Pastor, I don't believe that. I don't care what you don't believe because the chicken was in the freezer. She fried the chicken. I ate the chicken, and the chicken was good. So it don't matter what you think. Well, I'm talking about remembering Pass, victory. I'm talking about when, when, when your back was against the wall and the boy was saying it seemed like it was over. God made a way. You don't even know. How, you can't even explain how he brought you out. All you know is he brought you out. When that spider bit me in the, in the neck and the, the skin on the side of my face, it turned into water blisters. And then the water blister began to drain. And then it, the skin fell off and the whole side of my face was pink. And I told God, I said, God, don't let the devil mar me. And the Lord put the color of my skin back. Matched it just the right tint. Ain't God good? See, see, y'all try to put colors together, but God is the one that made the colors. So all God had to do is say, you know, this is what I want. And, and, and boom, there it is. And everything just matched. And years later, it's still matching. 
ain't getting no help. I ain't getting no help. <laughs> ain't he good? Look at Sister Rod, when her appendix ruptured and all of that. Years ago, still going. I'm not talking about being inflamed. Her appendix ruptured. And the doctors told her that your, the tissue in your body, it took uh, God to, and made a sack out of the tissue in your body and held the poison in one spot so it didn't spread all over your body. See, hers wasn't inflamed. Hers was ruptured. And God, God just held the poison in one spot. Uh, I look like I'm talking to the wrong folk. Maybe, but I'm talking about past victories. When we moved to Dallas and was supposed to get a house, and the house we were supposed to get, we didn't get. And we ended up staying with my sister, and then we went and looked at a house. And when we went to look at the house, somebody else came in and looked at the house while we were there. And when we got to the real estate office, this lady came out the office, and she looked at us like, you, are, you might as well forget it. I already got it. And the man called us in. We went in, and we started talking to him. Guess what? We got the house. We moved into the house, 3341 East Illinois. And while we were living in the house, you know, the man asked me, said, Harold, he said, why don't you just go on and buy this? I said, man, I just moved to Dallas. I don't have any money to buy. He said, I'll finance it for you. Favor goes where money. I ain't getting no help right now. We were looking at this house on Calcutta Drive, 828 Calcutta Drive. I was working on getting this. I was working on a house across the alley, and I saw this house was people were doing some crazy stuff. And I went around, and I saw a note on the door, and the mortgage company was trying to get in touch with the owner. I, I played Sherlock Holmes. I found the owner of the house, and we got everything together, and I was going to get the house before the, the mortgage company repoed it or foreclosed on it. And do you not know? Let me tell you all. This lady, this lady worked at Fishburn Cleaners, and we got ready for the closing, and she said she didn't have transportation. I said, I'll pick you up. Yeah, I had my old red Ford pickup, my Chevrolet pickup. I went down to the cleaners, and, and then she had a bag in her hand. Didn't matter, a paper bag, big one. And what she did, she jumped in the car and put the paper bag over next to the door. I said to myself, you can ride in my lap if you want to. We're going to the mortgage company. We're going to sign some papers today. I don't care. You, you, we going to go and sign. And you know what we did? We went to the mortgage company over there in Winwood Village, signed the papers that I, and got the house. Yes, yes. Look at God. He's a miracle working God. This is why I'm telling us, let's remember past victories. When, when the devil thought he had you, when he thought he had you between a rock and a hard place and God bless you. Now somebody said, well, pastor, what are you going, what are you going to use for a scripture? Y'all want to, I don't know how far I'm going to go, but I'm going to the book of Psalms. Is that all right with you all? Can I go to the book of Psalms tonight? Some, I got a good one. Psalms 34 and 1. Woo! Psalms 34 and 1. What did it say? I will. When? I will bless the Lord. At all times. <laughs> I don't care what I'm going through, how I'm feeling, what it look like. I'm giving God some praise. I'm giving him some glory. I'm telling him, thank you, Jesus. I'm tired to him. Yeah. I don't feel the best, but I'm giving God praise. Everything is not working like I want to, but I'm giving God praise. I'm remembering past victories. I'm saying what you brought me out of the last time. That's why I'm coming out this time. This is when David was running. Uh, it goes back to the book of Psalm, 1 Samuel. Around the 20th there, and when David was running from Saul, and he came in, and, and Amalek was after him. And boy, David was, and the Lord somebody said, well, that don't, sound, that don't sound like God. Like David was, that was sin. And what, call it what you want to. But David was between a rock and a hard place. And David played like a madman. David got the slobbering and going on and drooling all out his mouth. And they said, no, oh, this can't be David. So why y'all bring this fool in my tent? Why y'all bring him into my... <laughs> and David is scared. Dave, David said, you know what? I'm going to bless the Lord. I don't care what it look like. I'm giving him glory. I don't care how I feel. I don't care my, how bad my back is hurting, my kidneys is hurting. I'm giving them glory. I don't care how I feel like I got that pressure in my chest. I'm giving them glory. I don't care what my head feel like. I'm giving them glory. I don't care what my back feel like, my feet feel like. I'm giving God glory. I'm going to bless the Lord at all time. Woo! 
at all times. See, when you're blessing God at all times, it don't give the devil any space to say anything because you're giving God praise. And this is what it says. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm going to keep saying thank you, Jesus. I'm going to keep saying, Lord, I love you. I'm going to keep saying, Lord, I magnify you. I'm going to keep saying, Lord, I bless you. There is none like you. You are God all by yourself. You are the most high. You are the creator of the ends of the earth. You are the reason why I live. You Because you are, I am. I can't look at defeat for looking at victory. I may not have a victory right in front of me, but I got a whole bunch of them behind me. I ain't getting no help right now. You're hurting right now, but think about all the time you were hurting when God healed you. Think about all them times when you didn't know what you were going to do and how you were going to do it, and God made a way out of nowhere. Think about when all the news you got, all the doctors had to say everything was bad. He said, I'm going to bless him. David running from Saul. Saul trying to kill him. And God establishing him while he's running <laughs> God gave him his little militia. He gave him his little army. Started about 400 men, and then God bumped them up to about 600. Boy, and they got the whooping heads everywhere they went. Y'all just know, Saul, was, he, was, he had snitches everywhere. He was looking for David. Man, they were looking under every rock and every crack, every den, every curve, along every branch and every valley. And the Lord, you know what the Lord would do? Every time Saul thought he had him, the Spirit of the Lord would speak to him. And tell him, do this, do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, do this. Man, David was so, David was in a cave and he didn't know it. And Saul was laying up in the cave and David was in the back of the cave. And David's men wanted to kill him. But David had so much respect for his enemy. He had so much respect for the man of God. He said, I can't do this to God's anointed. I can't touch his anointing. One of David's men cut a little piece off of Saul's robe and the next morning David hollered across at Saul and told him I could have took you out last night if you don't believe it look at your robe look at the hem here it is here it is right here for if I took that off and you didn't know it how much easier it was for me to take your life Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all, I'm talking about people. Stop looking at your situation as the final stage. God has the last say. When you get to that point that God has the last say. The devil been mad at me and I don't care. He been mad at me ever since I said it. When I call him the prince of nothing. I don't care. He's the prince of nothing. He don't have nothing. When I say nothing, I mean no thing. All he has is a lake that burn it with fire and brimstone is waiting on him. When you look at the devil, everything he has is a suggestion. All he told Jesus, I'll do this. I'll, I, I'm going to give you all this if you fall. How are you going to give me something that's not even yours? You see, when the devil started messing with people's head, he said, you know what? Why don't you just go up here? Let's go up here. We went to the top of the, uh, the pinnacle of the temple. He said, jump, just dive down there and just kill yourself. You know he's giving his angels charge. They said, any time you dash your foot against a stump, the devil was quoting scripture. But Jesus not going to obey the devil. The devil was trying to get him to commit suicide. If he had done that, he would have been obeying the devil. What about you? When the devil suggested don't go to church tonight, you don't feel like it, but you can do everything else. Let me just read a little bit. Psalms 34.1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Look at him. Man, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Those, the, those people that you know, know what I've been going through, those people that's on the same plane, when they, help, that's like when you get a car and you come to church in your car. The sister Coco, she don't get, ah, oh, girl, we going to ride now. When you get your new house, folk don't get the umber, they don't get mad at you. Well, you think you all that cause you got a new house. No, no, no. We go, we go, we're gonna drink coffee, we're gonna eat nachos, we're gonna eat steaks, we're gonna have fish fries on the back on the patio and all of that. 
They glad for you. They go and get you gifts and bring you housewarming gifts and all kinds of stuff like that. Because, see, the, when the humble, when they, when they hear you, how you got to live, they're going to be glad. Those folks that are not humble, those people are going to be mad. The one the devil talking to. Oh, she thinks she all this anyway. You get promoted on your job because you didn't apply yourself. You didn't go to school. You didn't further your education. You just decide you're going to be it. And now folks are pushing themselves to be better and to do better. Don't get mad at somebody because they pushed themselves a little further. Just say, this is where I went. This is mine. But be glad when somebody else gets blessed. And let me tell you something. When you start rejoicing when other people get blessed, then God will bless you. But instead of you having a smirk on your face and one of them half congratulations. Y'all know what I'm talking about, a half congratulation. I'm messing up now. Listen to what he said. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hey, come on and get with me. Help me praise him. To, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Let's glorify God together. Let's give our praise together. Let's bless him together. Help me out. We can make a better sound when we do it together. Forget about your hurt. Forget about your woe. Learn to give God some praise. That's why you're hurting. He said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me. And delivered me, y'all better listen to me, and delivered me from all my fears. You know what's wrong with folk? They don't read scripture. They come to church and don't read scripture. He delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto me, they looked unto him and were, de- and were lightened and were lighted. And their faces were not ashamed. Listen, man, God know how to lift your burdens. He know how to take a frown off your face. <laughs> I'm talking about when you can give God praises and you're still hurting. You say, Lord, I thank you for my healing. And, you still, and boom, pain hits you. Say, I thank you for my healing. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you now. I magnify you for my healing, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. you just walking through the house. Lord, I thank you. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. Instead of saying, oh, oh, Lord, when you going to move this? When you going to do it? But you just give him, Lord, I thank you. I magnify you. I glorify you. When that bill is coming due and every day is getting closer and closer and you don't have the money, but you got enough to tell God, Lord, I'm giving you the glory. I'm giving you the praise. I know you're going to meet the need. I know you're going to make a way. I know you're going to work it out for me. He said, a poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Listen to this. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, encamping, not just encamp, he stays there. Y'all see that T-H on encamp- encamping? That means you got an angel that's hanging around you all the time. You ought to look, you ought to look over your shoulder. Sometime when you get in your car, you all just tell them, I thank you for being with me this morning. We get ready to go down the highway. <laughs> ain't getting no help right now. I ain't getting no help right now. Sometime when you feel like you're at home all alone, you're at the house by yourself, you know what? I thank you. you may not, I, I may not know your name, but I know you're present because the Lord said you encamp it. That means you can't leave. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You encamp it. That means you can't leave. He encamp it round about them. How? That fear him and deliver it. And then, you know, he's not there just encamping. Sitting around, laying around, doing nothing. He's doing some delivering. <laughs> then he goes on. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> Try him and see if he won't do what he said. Try him and see if he won't make a way out of no way. Try him and see if he won't honor his word. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Not trust, but trusted. You keep trusting. Irregardless of what you're going through, I'm still trusting him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want. Can I just say this slow? For there is no want to them that fear him. You don't have a need. That he won't meet. But you got to fear him. I'm not talking about a perverted fear. 
I'm talking about a godly fear. You respect him. You reverence him. You honor his word. You make sure you're living within the pages of this book. You make sure your life is trimmed with scripture. Any foolish, foolishness or folly come up in your life, you squash that. You're looking at yourself with a fine tooth comb because I know as long as I'm in the pleasing of God, God's going to bless me. See, it's on me. The, the, blessing, the contract is already there. God's going to do his part. Now your job is to do yours. Then when you ask yourself why God is not doing then you ask, ask yourself, are you fulfilling your part of the contract? And if you're not fulfilling your part of the contract, you are in spiritual breach. You are in spiritual breach of contract. And when you break the contract, the other party is not obligated to do their part. Ain't no problem with God. The earth is the Lord and the fullness of He got plenty of power. He got plenty. He, he can heal whenever he want to. If he doesn't, he said, you know, he can make gold if he want. There's a vein in the earth for silver. There's one he can he just makes. Man, back in the day, they had gold, silver and stuff, ground, like rocks on the ground. You mean to tell me he can't bless you? Check the contracts. See if you... Some folks ain't looked at the contract so long they forgot what's on there. Here it is right here. This is it. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me just go on and finish. Whew. Oh, fear the Lord. Ye his saints. Notice he didn't call you Christians. Ye his saints. For there is no want to them, talking about his saints, that fear him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Look what he said. He goes on to say, say, the young lion do lack. The young lion, because he don't know how to hunt, he's going to have some hungry days. Y'all hear what he's saying? And suffer hunger. He suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good. <sighs> Whew. That's, that's all that's been in your Bible all the time. <laughs> for, for, oh, God, oh, God, it's been in your Bible all the time. Pick it up and read it. Listen what he say. Come, ye children. Hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days? Who don't want to live a long time? Who don't want to live a good life? That he may see good. Question. He's asking the question. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. You don't, you don't have no bunch of foolishness in your mouth. I ain't getting no help right now. We got some church folk with some foolishness in their mouths. You ain't got no business. Somebody say, oh, pastor, you just, what you going, what's a, what's a joke, a lie? Well, I'm sorry. Folk get mad at me. Say, can I tell you this joke? I say, I don't joke. Oh, you, oh. Well, you want me to listen to your joke? Well, what's wrong with me telling you I don't joke? Tell it to somebody who want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I want to hear that, that edify. And you, you got to be careful you don't watch lies. You sitting up watching TV and folk cursing and going on and all that, and you say, ah, praise Jesus, praise, praise, and you keep watching it, though. Ain't nothing in you told you to cut it off, change the channel. I ain't getting no help right now. Folk using all kind of, I mean, all kind of old cursing words and this and that, you, and, and you just sitting there watching it. Well, it's entertainment. Well, you see it in the street. When you see it in the street, you don't have any control over it. But when you're watching it at home, you got a knob and a channel knob, click. And everything on there is cursing. You know what you do? Hit the off button. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. Go to uhdtchurch.com. You won't hear no cursing. Oh, God. That's all right. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Listen to what he's getting ready to say. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. God's looking at you. And his ears are open unto their cry. You got to make sure you're righteous. Y'all see that? The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So that's just the opposite of being righteous. Evil is wrong. Well, amen. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry. The Lord hear it. Y'all hear that? The righteous cry. You cry, but the Lord is always listening. And deliver it 
Y'all see that TH on deliver? And deliver them out of all of their trouble. You don't have a problem. You don't have a sickness. You don't have a need that God can't deliver you from. Our righteous living, it, it compels God to do. When Isaiah was told, when Isaiah told Hezekiah he was going to die, Hezekiah put his life up before God. And he said, Lord, I'm not ready to die. You know how I've walked up right, right before you. I kept your statues. And, 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 and he, he, he swathed God so much with his life before Isaiah could even get out of the, the, the middle court. The Lord said, listen, go back and tell him. Uh-huh. Isaiah didn't ask, Hezekiah didn't ask for a number of years. He just said he wasn't ready to die. And the Lord told him, you know what? Go back and tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. Y'all know some of us ran up on death's door. We ran up on our time. And because of our righteousness, because of the way we live, because of the way we treated God and our determination to do for him, God said, you know what? Not now. I'm extending your life. Some, some of us weren't supposed to have gotten married. Some of us weren't supposed to have gotten grown. Some of us supposed to have been pumping up days a long time ago. But because the Lord saw something in us and after he saved us, then he gave us extensions. Sometime at a bank, you can get one extension, and then some things don't work out just right. You have to go back and ask, get, I need another extension. That means we're going to give you some more time. <laughs> Woo! Lord, help me. Listen what the Bible says. The Lord is nigh. Y'all know what nigh? Not night, but nigh. The Lord is close unto them that are of a broken heart. When you think you're crying and you're all by yourself, the Lord is right there with you. He was there all the time. That's all right. Ain't God good? He was, he was, when you thought you was all by yourself, over in the night when you were crying and weeping, don't nobody understand, don't nobody know. Nobody know the troubles I've seen. All of that. Look what the Bible say. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Life has hurt you. Your heart is broken. You want to hold your head up, but situations won't let you. You're looking for answers and you can't find answers. You're trying to find peace and look like peace is running from you. You know what the books say? He's nigh. He's close to those. And look what he does. And save it. Y'all see that? Save it. That's not necessary. Save it for, with salvation. But he del- save me. He delivered. Such as be of a contract. When, when your spirit get repentant, when you become apologetic, when you become so broken, Lord, I'm sorry. Will you please forgive me? You know what he does? He say he saved it. That's why when people come to the altar, when you come down to this altar and you got these dry eyes and you grinning and going on, you don't want nothing. You don't want nothing. When people come down to my, well, you act like God owes you something. You don't want, but when you see people coming down to the altar and they all engulfed in tears, they can't hardly talk. They just, just shaking their head and, and, and you ask them to lift your hand. They can't, you almost have to raise their hand up and, and before they just, just crying out there. See, that's a broken, that's somebody that's at a point where, Lord, I'm sorry I ever sinned against you. If you can take what's left and make something out of it, I give you what's left. I give, I give you whatever you can do with this that's left. I know I've, I've been over the river and through the woods, but if you can take what I give myself to you. This is what he's saying. Of a contrite spirit. You're broken. You're hurt. You're repentant. And then he goes on to say, many. <laughs> Some of y'all, if your Bible ain't too sacred, you ought to just uh, underline this one. Many. I mean, the, the righteous have afflictions. Is that right? Many are. So just because you got more than one affliction, don't think, well, where is God? Why the devil do it? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You save, sanctified, Holy Ghost, fear, fire, baptized, do speak in tongues, as the Spirit give utterance. Many are the afflictions. 
in your savingness, you're going to have a whole lot of pains, aches. You're going to have a whole lot of this, that, and the other. I told Sister Rogers years ago, my pastor of old, he told me one time, he said, son, there's going to come a time when you're going to pray for people and you're going to have to go home and pray that out for you. A few weeks ago, and Bertha's grandson, we prayed for him with his hand. And while I'm standing out there, all of a sudden, a pain hit me in my leg. And I said, what is this? I said, I know he got delivered. And I told him, when I went home, I had to go home and pray that off of him. Because, see, when I was 10 years old, I got this right leg broke. And right when my leg got broke, it started hurting. I had to go home that Sunday evening and pray it off. And I came back Sunday night. He walked up in here. Sunday, working his hands like this. You have to be blind not to see it. Or you tell yourself the devil is a lie. That ain't true. That ain't true. Well, you can't tell a brother that. And I'm telling my, my, my ministers, preachers, you're going to find out in your ministry. There's going to be times you're going to pray for people. And all of a sudden, you didn't have a headache. Now you got a headache. Your back wasn't hurting. Your arm wasn't hurting. This and that and the other. Then now you got to go home and, and pray that off of you. Somebody said, well, Pastor, I don't, I, I'm, I'm talking to folk got faith. But the Lord, notice what he said, but, that's a conjunction. Meaning that the first part of that statement pivots on the last. But the Lord, but the, y'all see that Lord is all capital. But the Lord delivereth. Y'all see that? T-H, not just one time. The Lord delivered him, it's written in a heat tense, she, out of, notice he said them, or all of them. Whatever come up, God's able to deliver you. Y'all better get it. I'm just about finished. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. See, the Bible goes through different phases when it's speaking. Here he's talking about Jesus when he was on the cross, when the bone in his body be broken. That's why it's good to come to church. That's why it's good to come to church. Evil shall slay the wicked. They that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Remembering past victories. Woo. I got this was for me tonight. Maybe none of y'all needed this. This, this was for me tonight. I, I'm, I'm remembering. I'm going back and thinking about, you know, sometimes we think about the big thing. I'm talking about just a little, little bitty thing, little bitty thing, past victories. I, re, I remember my infant, uh, infant, infancy of my uh, carpentry career. I was working on my grandmother's house, and my grandmother had one. She didn't have a breaker box. She had one of those old... Some of us from the country know what I'm talking about. She had one of those old fuse, a porcelain fitting on the wall, and had two little old fuses you had to screw in there. When the power went out, you had to screw those little fuses out and put another one in. Hey, get no help. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm just talking. Some folk were a pastor. We always had a breaker box. I ain't talking to you. But I'm talking about, but, and when they put this one in at my grandmother's, they put it in upside down. And I didn't know it, and I thought the hot part was on the top and the, and the cold was on the bottom, and they put it in upside down. And I'm in there, and I had just bought a brand new pair of dykes, wire cutters, and I was changing that out. And when I cut that wire, I think somewhere I still got those cutters because when the, the electricity hit it, it cut a gash in the blade. And I was standing there. And God's my witness. There was a blue ring of fire all the way around me. And I was just standing there. I'm in the midst of this blue ring of fire. That's going all around. It was just like a hula hoop. But it was in the air around me. And then all of a sudden, it disappeared. But I was saved. Boy, you so know. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't need, no, I don't need nobody to help me say nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I praise you. I, and I looked at the pliers. I kept, I said, I'm going to keep the pliers as a memorial to remember how God spared my life. I mean, that, that blue ring of fire, it was just, it was just like this. And I'm standing there. And God didn't allow me to get it executed. That could have been the end. I could have been a spot. What are you saying, Pastor? I heard somebody say something some years later, uh, ago when I moved to Dallas and was working. This gentleman said he was a, an electrical contractor, and they was working out at DFW when they were building the airport. You know, it's been some time ago. And so they had these young uh, apprentice working there, and they kept telling them what to do and what not to do. And they were hanging conduit to run wires through. But then they had this big conduit, looked like it's 10 or 12 inches in diameter. And the electricity was so strong, he said, you could hear it just humming. And they told these guys what to do and what not to do. And one of the young electricians, he's going to hang some conduit, but he's going to hang it off this big one. And you can hear electricity humming. And when he took his screw gun to screw the anchor into it, he ended up being a spot on the floor. And the contractor said, they left me that spot on the floor to remind all these other young guys the same thing will happen to you if you do this. He said it wasn't, wasn't even nothing to pick up, wasn't nothing to bury. It was just a spot. And electricity nuked him. Saints of God, think about all the time the Lord brought you out. And next time the devil tell you he won't. I don't know if y'all ever remember. Everybody's standing to your feet. Not too long ago they had this commercial. They had this commercial, and in, in this commercial, these two men are showing their battle scars. One of them pulled his shirt up, and he said, I got this like in Korea and all this. And this one, they said he got this and that and the other. And finally, one of them just he kept, every time he would say something, the other guy would say something. Finally, the other guy just said, you know what, I, I just run out. I don't have nothing else to, to show. So <laughs> he, just, he just quit. <laughs> but you know what? Every now and then, you ought to be able to, Look at your body and see some of them marks that's on you. Hey, get up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of us go back when we were little and we were young. Yeah. I got, I got one right here on this leg right back here, stealing peaches. Yeah, we were stealing peaches one night. Man, we were back there in this man's field. He had a peach tree back there. I had my T-shirt out. I had them rolled up like that with peaches. And that, that old mirror went to make a noise. We thought he, because we knew he would shoot at you. And we were running, and we had to run across this long field. And there was a little trail because people went through there. And the guys that was in front of me wasn't running fast enough. So I decided I'm going to step around them. So I'm out of the trail. And I see this, this big bush coming, these weeds coming up. I'm going to do one of them high hurdles. You know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step over them. Man, that barbed wire grabbed me. And it whooped me up and cut me up. But when I got up, I, I hung on to the peaches, though. And we got up to the next street, and we got to the street light. I could hear stuff gushing in my shoes. Blood was running down in my shoe. But you know what? I held on to the peaches. <laughs> hey, God, good. This is what I'm talking about. When you go back over life. Some of us got marks. We can see I was in this car accident. This happened. That happened. I'm, a, I'm not supposed to be here. But God spared my life. Tonight, remembering past victories. That's the message tonight. Remembering when you get down, when you get sort of flipped from one side to the other, not knowing what to do, what to think, just go back and pull you up a past victory. Say, look what God did. Look at, just look at you and say, boy, look at me. Look at me now. Look, look what happened. Look at me. Amen. 
this is what I'm talking about. This, this is how we keep going. This is how we keep our deliverance because the enemy is constantly trying to tell us you're not coming out of this one. But you keep telling yourself, he brought me out of that. He's going to bring me out of this. When I got my leg broke, you know what? I, I still have the pen, a stainless steel pen that they put in that, in that bone. And that's been, I was 10 years old then. Wow. I still got the stainless steel pen that the doctors took out. They gave it to me for a souvenir. <laughs> when I look, I said, you can't tell me it wasn't broke because I got the pen. God's a good God. This is what I'm saying to us tonight. Remembering past, I'm getting ready to pray for somebody in our viewing audience tonight, right where you are. If you're not saved, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Lifting holy hands without wrath or doubting, right where you are. Just ask, say, Father, forgive me of all my sin. Save me right now. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. God, you heard that request. You heard that prayer. Do it right now. Save them and fill them with the Holy Ghost. Those that are sick in their body, give them a miracle. We thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. We thank you. In Jesus' name. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor. There it is, my brothers and my sisters, I gave you what God gave me. Looking forward to a great time this coming Saturday night, the night of Explore. Remember, you don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God until we come your way again next time. I want you to go with God, and I promise you, God will go with you. Give the Lord a praise for his goodness. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a praise. We appreciate the Lord tonight. We thank God for his goodness. Brother Arthur, the Lord said, pray, come here, please. Good morning. I believe God. I believe God. Even now. It's over. I believe God. Even now. It's gone. Please, sir. Let me see your hands. Even now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Please, yeah. We thank you. We give you praise. Hey, hey, hey. We speak to this now. Commanding it to go in the name of Jesus. We speak complete deliverance in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Thank you.